we look at three methods to expect future equity returns. The first method for calculating expected future returns involves combining the risk-free return and the equity risk premium. The risk-free return is the return of government-backed securities such as RBI's 10-year GSEX, which offers 7% return. Think of these as guaranteed returns on the safest investments. The equity risk premium captures the additional return investors can expect for taking additional risk of equity investing. It reflects the risk investors see in investing in equity and the price they attach to that risk. In this paper, which assess equity risk premium for many countries, for India, it recommends a 7% equity risk premium. Similar value is attributed by Professor Damodaran of Stearns University, which calculates equity risk premium for all the countries. India's risk premium is around 8%, quite around the previous 7%. Look at what goes into calculating the equity risk premium for a country. It takes into account economic risks of the country, the inflation rate, the amount of money floating in the economy, government policies, and also factors behavioral psychology. If we take 7% risk-free rate and add 7% for equity risk premium, we get 14% as the expected equity returns. This process provides a projection of potential rewards considering secure risk-free investments and the potential gains from riskier equities. By grasping the interplay between the risk-free rate and the equity risk premium, we gain insights to assess various investment options. These methods are probabilistic in nature and not deterministic. The idea is to be directionally right than be diagonally opposite. But in the short run, markets are influenced by emotion and are subject to volatility. The second method is extrapolating bank FD rates. Presently offering 7 to 8% interest, investors deposit money with banks which lends this money to corporations by adding their margin, say 2%. Corporations borrowing this capital can potentially generate at least 2% extra returns, aligning equity returns to 12 to 14%. Therefore, a retail investor who invests in equity can expect around 4% more than FD returns. This is because investing in equities essentially involves providing capital to these enterprises. Third, we expect nominal growth to be equal to GDP plus inflation, which forecasts India's GDP at 6.3%. Inflation, RBI's upper tolerance limit is 6%. One can expect a GDP of 6% and an inflation of 6%. Add a few points, given the fund manager's ability to generate an alpha, we can expect between 12 to 14% return on equity funds. Data from all the three methods indicate to a long-term average of 12 to 14% on equity investing, which incidentally has been the long-term annualized return of the index itself. But the biggest challenge is that this is not going to be a straight line. It will come with a lot of volatility. If you just see in the last two years itself, markets have corrected by 10 to 15%, almost five times. This can be a very unnerving experience. It is natural to expect this pattern to repeat and that markets can fall again. Markets have scaled this wall of worry every time. They make new highs every 18 to 24 months. That's how, in spite of volatility, market has generated almost 14% return annualized. Volatility causes panic and makes a sell. You can't make money in the future by selling today. You can make money only by staying invested and bearing the pains of today. Selling is a very tough decision and look at what the FII has learned. When the foreign institution sold 250,000 crore, market fell 10%. But when they bought 2,20,000 crore, market went up 25%. So their selling decision was a very expensive one. If you have made money in the short term, it is pure luck. If you have made money in the medium term, it is skill. And if you have made good money in the long term, it is temperament. 
So bring in only three to five year money into the market. If you found the content useful, please like the video, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to this channel.